Hello Seattle condominium owners. I am here to give you the October latest statistics for 2024 in terms of what we are seeing with real estate values in the market. And I am excited to report that after many long years of work from home and not very many people wanting to be in the city centers, we are seeing Amazon and other employers start to get serious about asking employees to come back to work five days a week. At least at Amazon, my understanding is that rule goes into effect at uh, the beginning of the year in January. And so I expect this is gonna be really good news for our downtown areas and uh, the condominium market because people wanna be relocating closer to their jobs, kind of in reverse of what we saw during COVID when it was work from home, the city emptied out, people went into those exo suburbs, the rural suburbs, and now they're going to be coming back. So that's my prediction. Let's see what the data says here uh, for the month of October. We're looking back. We get our MLS data a month in arrears. So this is reflective of closings and pricing in September. Now, first, what we're looking at here is the median sales price. And the green line is Bellevue. The red line is Seattle and the black line is King County as point of reference. I didn't do Snohomish County because they don't have a lot of condominiums. But as you can see, as expected, Bellevue is really keeping up the top end of the curve with uh, average condominium prices there bouncing up again this fall. Typically, we saw a lull in the summer. It's not as active. And then a resurgence in September and October before calming down again around the Christmas holidays. So average price here, median price in Bellevue is 748,000. In King County overall is 560 with the Seattle city limits area being 600,000 as the average price point uh, for condos. And I'm seeing, uh, I have a client who's out, just this is anecdotal. We're looking at two bedroom, new construction townhomes under 700,000. We're finding a lot of options that are kind of those zero lot line townhouses, some are with condominium associations for just under 700,000 and about a thousand square feet, typically three stories. So you have to be thoughtful about what you're looking for. If that type of model works for you, there's some very nice inventory available. And if that's what you already have, that's what you'll be competing against. Now I'm looking at averages just to see if this changes anything. Uh, it pulls the numbers up a little bit because there are still luxury buildings out there. Now let's take a look at new listings. One of the stories of the recent years has been lack of inventory, but we are seeing new listings going up with more coming on the market starting in September and how much inventory we have available has been increasing throughout the year. Now this we've talked in the past about the locked in effect people with low interest rates. Let's say they refinanced and had a 3% interest rate and then they wanted to buy something new and they were looking at a 7% interest rate earlier in the year. That interest rate has been coming down for the last six months. Now we're about uh, six and a quarter or a little less. So if you're wanting to move up or shift into a different home, have, get married, have a baby, have a different job and move, that's becoming a little bit easier. So we're seeing less of that locked in effect. More sellers are feeling flexible to put their home on the market. That's great. Also more time has gone by. You know, we can't hold out forever. If we've got to move, we've got to move. So a lot of moves are not driven by just pure economics alone and what we're talking about here today, but by life events, right? We just had our third kid. We're in a two bedroom condo. We just can't do it anymore. We need to move. So we're seeing more inventory coming onto the market, which is interesting from a supply and demand perspective. Now we have more supply, more houses on the market combined with lower interest rates improves affordability that can improve demand. And we will hopefully see a surge of buyers coming through that are excited about condominiums that want to take up that inventory and continue to keep prices strong for you. One of the biggest challenges I've been seeing in condos lately is that we have a lot of older condominium buildings throughout the city of Seattle and Bellevue, 1960s, 70s, 80s construction. And depending on how those have been managed, a lot of them do not have the cash reserves required for proper maintenance. So they're having to come to the owners for special assessments. They're having to increase the dues. Usually, you know, I think about $500 a month is a good amount of HOA dues are kind of average and, and sustainable, 
But if we're seeing dues at seven or 800 a month for a non-luxury building, that can seem out of scale. And if your building has especially high dues, you might have to have a lower purchase price to offset that because most of your buyers are gonna be shopping based on monthly payment and they can't necessarily afford really high dues and a really high mortgage. And again, you'll have to compare with what's available across the board. Also look at your reserve study. If your condominium association has performed a reserve study, take a look at that. Ask the HOA board for a copy because I'm seeing a lot of buildings have about 20% of the suggested cash in the bank for savings and repairs. If you have 50%, you're doing very, very well. You'd be in the top 10% of condos. I don't think many have 50% the recommended amount, but a lot of these reports have a chart that is shown to buyers that says, if your building has less than 30% of the recommended savings amount, you're not gonna have enough money saved to be able to pay for your roof, your parking lot, your siding, your landscaping without potentially a special assessment, which is a large bill coming due. I've seen condos lately with a pretty large, you know, $40,000 special assessment. I saw one that was $80,000 special assessment. The condo was out on a pier and instead of a foundation on dirt, it was on a dock basically. And they had to repair the pier. And <laughs> the gentleman I was talking to who was selling his condo, had um, an $80,000 special assessment on his, you know, one unit condo or one bedroom condo in there. So it just, it was, it's very expensive and buyers are nervous about that. They're putting all their money into the purchase. They don't necessarily have additional funds for a special assessment, which might be due all at once. Typically they're financed over a couple of years. So if your building has had a special assessment and you're looking to sell, it would be advisable to consider paying off that special assessment in full for the new buyer if you want to get um, the full purchase price of the home. Again, otherwise it's very off-putting. It can be hard to get financing. Condo financing has gotten more difficult to get in the last couple of years. So if you're approaching the sale of a condo, it's a really good idea to do your due diligence and get everything squared away up front. Okay, so looking at this, Lots of new inventory coming onto the market. Let's see how many sales are closing. Fewer homes are closing. That means not as many people are buying condos. They may be switching into other options like single family homes. Most people, some people prefer condos, but many people prefer the idea of a single family home. They just can't afford it. So as affordability comes down on houses, people might be, especially in those higher price point condos, they might be saying, oh, you know, I'm going to do a house instead. Uh, we don't know for sure. And then days on market is increasing. So for houses, we are seeing days on market between 10 and 20 days in these areas. And for condos around 20 to 30 days, it looks like here. So a little bit longer reflective that it's maybe not as desirable of a product for home buyers out there, but this is still very good. When I went to school, <laughs> I, this was not even real estate licensing. This was just um, sort of economic stuff back in the day when I started out as a real estate investor. And they would tell us if it was selling in, in three to six months, that was a balanced market. Longer than six months was the buyer's market and shorter than three months to sell a home was a seller's market. Now, no time in the last five years has it been uh, less than, <laughs> or has it taken more than about two months to sell a, a home in Seattle? So we are just kind of perpetually in that seller's market state. However, a lot of people feel that if it hasn't sold in two weeks in our market, then it's fair game. It's a stale listing. Nobody wants it. And they're going to come and negotiate with you a little bit harder. So it's important as you put the house on the market to get that momentum, not just to overprice it for kicks and see and then reduce your price, you can easily waste 30 to 45 days on the market experimenting to find the right price. And at that point, people are saying, eh, you know, nobody liked this property, it's been passed over. We're not sure that, that we're gonna move forward with it. Here we're looking at the percentage of list price that homes are selling for. And so on average, 97, 98%. So we're still getting pretty good, pretty full price offers. But again, if you overprice your home, if you're on the market for a long time, 
Uh, chances are you're not getting multiple offers bidding the house up for the condos. You might have to negotiate and come down a little bit on your price. And I will tell you if you're too far off on your price, if you're up here and the market says you should be down here, you're not going to get any offers. You're not going to get market level offers. People will just say you're out to lunch. They're not going to mess with you. And there's not a lot of extreme negotiating. So you have to signal your market readiness and bring the property to the point where People are looking, people are coming, people are making offers. And typically for a condo in the Seattle market, you don't have to wait that long. We're, we're only gonna need to show it six or seven times. I usually say if you've had 10 showings on a property and nobody has made an offer, then it's time to rethink your strategy, your pricing, the presentation of the home, something is off. But this is showing us that the condo buyers don't even need that many. If you've had six or seven showings, you should have found somebody that wants to, to make an offer on the home. Uh, if you've had 10 or more and no offers are coming in, time to adjust. If you can't even get 10 people out to see the property within the average days on market time period of about 20, 30 days, if you haven't had 10 showings in that time, then again, you're not even selling them on the first step, which is getting them out to see the property. So anyway, that's my take on things. We'll go back to the price and say, Prices are holding pretty stable. We can look at some rolling data here to kind of smooth out some of these curves. We'll give it a rolling six months. So overall, the trend is a little bit softer this year. Uh, you can see we kind of peaked in May and things have come down a little bit, uh, primarily in Seattle. Bellevue's doing pretty well. Year over year, we're looking at a three to six or a 7% price increase, but it's not an exciting year for condos. It's kind of a hold steady year. And I'm hopeful again, that as we get more people coming back to work, that we'll see this uh, improve a little bit. But even looking back over the last three years, looking back over the last five years, 10 years, it's just, it's not as strong moving. It's not as volatile of a market. It's just kind of the slow and steady. You hold your position against inflation. You keep your costs locked in so that you don't have, you know, your runaway rent payments and things like that and you will build equity over time as a condominium owner. It just takes a little bit longer. It's not quite as strong as the single family housing market. So thanks so much for joining me. I am excited that you're here. If you have questions about your condo or anything else that I can help you with, you can always reach me. I'm Realtor Emily Cressy. My website is homeproassociates.com. If you wanna reach me, you can text the word home, H-O-M-E, to my phone number 206-578-3438 and I will look forward to getting the conversation started with you. Until then, have a great day and enjoy October. Do some pumpkin-y things. I'll see you on the next video.